and trier L functions. Sorry, I forgot. Okay. Shall I start again? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, you saw the surprise. <laughs> um, okay. So thanks very much uh, for uh, the introduction and the invitation. And um, what I'm going to talk about today, um, when I get to the new part, is joint work with Alexander Florian and Edna Jones. Um, but before that, um, so here's a Sudoku. Um, so following the um, nice uh, discussions from last night, um, it's a Sudoku with uh, 17 clues, which is a minimum uh, number of clues um, for a Sudoku to have a unique uh, solution. So if you get bored during the talk, uh, there you have. Yeah, um, <laughs> oh, but you can take a picture. <laughs> um, has nine numbers. Yeah, there's no nine. Okay. Um, Okay, so last night I was a bit too shy uh, to come forward uh, to the podium. Um, the first time I, I hear about um, Bram was um, when I was finishing my PhD and I have um, my friend, uh, Kay Peterson, um, she was also finishing her PhD and, uh, in topology. And then one day she comes and she says, oh, I got a postdoc offer from someone in number theory in Canada, in a place called Kingston. <laughs> and I never heard about this. <laughs> so, um, and, and it's a good story because I mean, Kay accepted the offer and, uh, and, and she spent, um, I think a couple of years with working with Ram and she, you know, that expanded, expanded her research. And uh, so she, went on to have a very successful career in both number theory and topology. And um, so that's a, that's a great story for me. And it was the first time of a series of stories um, hearing about um, Ram uh, mentoring um, very strong female mathematicians. And we saw many examples, uh, and we are seeing many examples in uh, this conference. And uh, this is something that uh, people didn't mention last night. So, um, so one thing is Ram was, uh, has always been very supportive of um, women mathematicians, even before uh, it was you know, kind of trendy to do that. Uh, so thank you so much for that. Um, the first time I met him in person was um, when he came to give a talk where I was um, in the institution where I was a postdoc. And he talked about um, some work he had done with Kanenika and uh, on the Hurwitz zeta function. And I was um, very interested um, because as we saw in Anura's talk, um, there are a very nice relationship with the special values of uh, zeta functions. And um, yeah, and I use that for, you know, simplifying some of the formulas in my thesis. So that was very exciting. And that was the beginning of, um, yeah, very nice, uh, meeting Ram in conferences and different events and um, being, you know, informally mentored by him, really. I mean, I never, I was never an official mentee, but uh, um, I appreciated all this advice and, friend, and friendship uh, all these years. So thank you very much. Um, okay, so now um, to my talk. So I want to talk about um, Artin Schreier covers. Um, so we start with uh, P, uh, Q, sorry, so, um, power of a prime P. We're going to take uh, P to be odd because um, Chu is a very odd prime. And, and Artin Schreier curve, uh, to be concrete, is going to be given by um, 
an equation like this, uh, y to the p minus y equals f of x, okay? And I'm going to be looking at this equation over, oh, okay, I went too fast, okay, over um, fq. So I'm interested in uh, this type of equation over fq. And why, um, well, you can think of this in different ways. So one way of thinking is this, um, gives a p degree, degree p extension of fqx. So, um, and why, you know, is, is, is the Artin Schreier version of perhaps the most common type of um, curve that one can consider, you know, when you take um, an L degree extension of fqx, right? And you think of, y to the l equals f of x. So it's like adding an l root um, to fqx, okay? And so in the way that this, you can think of in terms of like Kummer theory, this uh, will be Artin Schreier theory. Okay, so this is a, why would you look at this to begin with? And um, I, I did uh, some, Study so this this type of uh, curve, the L cycle curves, L cycle covers, have been studied extensively, and so it's natural when you study this to wonder about this other type of curve. Um, okay, so when you have an Artin Schreier curve like this, um, you can compute the genus. So f of x is a rational function, and so you can compute the genus um, by using a Riemann Hurwitz formula and. Uh, it, the relationship is very nice given in terms of the degrees of the poles. So, so if you have R plus one poles for F of X and uh, DJ are the orders, then you're going to get a formula for the genus given by uh, P minus one over two times R minus one plus the sum of the DJs. Now this is a bit, maybe a bit complicated formula, but like to be concrete, if f of x is a polynomial, which is um, the case that uh, most commonly study, then what happens is that you only have a pole at infinity and the, um, and the order of the pole is going to be the degree of f. And so you get this very nice formula, p minus one times d minus one over two. And this is really the case that I'm going to be talking about, uh, mostly also for the new result. We only have results for this case, but it's nice to keep in mind that this is part, oops, this is part of a bigger, um, a bigger picture. Um, so why study Artin Schreier curves? Well, I told you a bit, okay, so it's kind of an analog, analog construction to um, Kummer extensions. Um, but they are different in a way. So the characteristic is really embedded in the definition because you have y to the p minus y. And so the p, the characteristic is there. So it's not something that you can take the equation and change your base field as you want. If you change your base field, you need to keep your characteristic. Um, so they are a bit different. Um, many, they have many properties that can be described explicitly in a more concrete ways than a general curve. Um, so we're going to mention this later, like the set of functions can be written in terms of exponential sums, for example. And one thing that they um, have is that they are an example of um, improving the vague bound. Uh, so there are um, results by uh, Rojas Leon and one uh, where um, so the very bound in general will give you, so here is 2G, okay? So if you take F a polynomial, here is 2G. Um, but they get results that under certain conditions that uh, we're not going to go into details, they get a bound uh, in terms of a square root of Q to the K plus one, okay? When you're looking at points over F Q to the K. And so depending on D, okay? So if you have D big enough, um, respect to k, uh, respect to um, q, I should say. So if you have, uh, if this is big, then um, this is really an improvement on the vague bound. No.
can you try to see? Yes. Can people hear me? Speaking. Uh, yes. They yes. Can hear you now. Okay. Okay, so this lies. Okay. 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 So let me um, summarize things um, a bit. Okay, so the bottom line here is the following. We have some understanding of the distribution of number of points in these curves. Um, if you want to go further, you want to study zeros of a set of function. The set of function can be naturally, so you care about what happens to the zeros in the, you know, you look at the numerator. The numerator can be naturally written as a product of delta minus one factors, okay, uh, sorry, p minus one factors, um, that had to do, each of them is taking a different additive character, okay, and you have p minus one additive character, so you have this p minus one factor. So this is natural way. And so if you want to study the L function, I mean, it's natural for us to study just a single factor, okay. Now, um, the first thing that one can do, for example, is to study what happens to the arguments of uh, the zeros and the distribution of the arguments. Um, so let me go quickly. You, can, you want to count uh, how many arguments you have fitting in some interval. And so you can study that. We did that. Um, okay, so there are some details here. It doesn't matter, but the point is that if you do this, you are not going to distinguish on the different strata, okay? So all these different families that I described before, they behave the same when you look um, in terms of how many, essentially what happens, how many zero fit inside some inter interval. Now, another thing you can do with the cell functions is to study the, um, the low-lying zero. So, the n level density and so this is some uh, work some very recent work of entin and pirani where they study um, two level densities for the polynomial families for the zero stratum uh, one level density for the um, ordinary family they obtain unitary symmetry they also look at um, the one level density for a subset of uh, the polynomial family when you take the polynomials that are odd. And in that case, they obtain symplectic symmetry. So that's very interesting. So there are these different symmetries that you get uh, in the different families. So one thing that we wanted to do, our goal was um, to study moments of these cell functions. Now, um, this is still something that is in progress. So what we did so far is just moments of the uh, zero stratum, which is the polynomial family. Um, so our results are, okay, so what's the moment here? So basically we take the sum of the K power of the L function evaluated at uh, one over square root of Q, which is the center of um, the, the critical, um, the center of the functional equation. And uh, we take this average. And so the, the, the exciting thing is that we get a formula, okay, well, with some error term. Now this error term, one has to be a bit careful. So sometimes this error term is too large, okay. But um, essentially, when Q is a large power of P, this allows you, this gives you a meaningful formula uh, for the moments up to the K up to P, okay? So you get uh, first moment, second moment, et cetera, up to the P power moment, okay, essentially. So these are the interval where actually the error term is small, so this formula makes sense. Um, so for, in particular, for K equals one, we get an exact formula. So this is, this is quite striking. Uh, so for example, if you look at the Dirichlet case, okay, so say the quadratic extensions, um, what we know essentially is uh, the first four moments, okay? 
So, so this is very nice. And then another result that we have is the moment by taking the absolute value square. And again, it's a, um, an exact formula. Okay, it's the coefficients are complicated to write. Okay, so I, I didn't write all the details, but um, we get an exact formula for that. Okay, and um, maybe very quickly. Okay, so this result um, is proven by methods that are quite standard. Um, so basically, there is an approximate functional equation. We use the approximate functional equation to to make um, the dishes some shorter, and um, we evaluate things using um, a, a Perron's formula. Now, the the result from the previous slide actually uses a combination of um, very different things. Um, so I wanted to mention, so one, the first ingredient is trying to, you know, organizing ourselves to count the curves, okay? So it's not as trivial as just take F to be any polynomial, okay? Because they are uh, automorphisms, okay? So the fact that you have Y to the P minus Y, okay? So um, actually the coefficients of um, with sub index that is multiple of p don't really count you can eliminate them so there is some part that has to do taking into account that um, then there is a very very interesting result by Entin um, that essentially um, he's able to write these l functions in the additive character that we want uh, whose moment we want to compute essentially as an L function in a multiplicative character, okay? And that makes life much easier when you take your power. Um, and this, this multiplicative character is a character modulo, is a character of order P modulo, modulo a power of X. Now, if I tell you about a character of order P, well, that sounds difficult. Already working with quadratic characters, cubic characters can be very hard. And here I'm saying order P in general. But the thing that makes life easy is that the modulo is very special, okay? So it's modulo X to the D minus one is a power of X. And so that um, allows us to actually use some trick um, to basically what happens is when you try to compute this moment, you end up having to compute some character sum with this multiplicative character. And that ends up translating into um, a sum over arithmetic progressions. Now, because we're working modulo power of x, you can use an idea of Kitten and Rudnick that transforms the condition of a sum over arithmetic progressions to a condition over short intervals. And um, the idea is, is very simple. Basically, you replace um, the polynomial f whose you know, that you have a condition, like a congruence condition, you replace it by um, basically re reverse the coefficients, okay? And what happens after you do that is that the congruence condition becomes um, a, a short interval condition. So it's some fixed polynomial plus some polynomial of a small degree. And then, when you have, okay, maybe you are going to say, okay, what do I win with that? Okay, so there is a miraculous result by uh, Sabin where he actually estimates um, the divisor function in short intervals. So it's a, it's a relatively recent result um, in short intervals for uh, function fields. Okay, so it's, this is exactly the thing that um, we need. And then combining all um, this idea, these ideas we are able to prove uh, all these moments, this result. Okay, um, and so the, this result is nice, but of course I, I spent a lot of time mentioning the different families. And one thing we would like to have is moments for the different families. And at some point we even thought we have them and, uh, yeah, and then we discovered some mistakes. So this is actually very tricky. Uh, yeah, very tricky computations, each family have different, uh, require different ideas on how to compute the moments. Okay. So and with that, I'd like to thank you very much for your attention. And as promised, <laughs> so happy birthday, Ram, and uh, here's the solution. Thank you, Matilda. Questions?
what do you what difference do you expect to see between the strata in terms of distribution um well okay so the 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 thing that i expect okay so this family okay so this family is unitary also so i expect to have the same the same um moments i mean with different constants but the same growth and uh, and and this one is so this is the ordinary uh, family now this is the um, laurent family that i suspect we can do the, the computation we we were a bit frustrating because we we thought we had the ordinary and uh, we didn't but i think this one is going to give something very similar to what we have because this is the laurent polynomial now i'm very curious about this one uh, these are the odd polynomials and According to the results of Entin and Pirani, um, this is really like a symmetric family. Uh, so, so that should give something different. So, um, There's a question online. I guess Felix has his hand raised. Yes. Felix, go ahead. Hello. Um, thank, you for the, thank you for the talk. My question is the following. Um, do you think there's any hope to adapt what you did for Arjun Schreier hypersurfaces, which is something that Rojas Leon in one is addressing in their paper? Um, so basically, I, you have unless you have multiple variables instead of just f one variable. Yeah, um, um, I don't know enough to answer the question, so I don't know what happens to the zeta function. Um, like something that we use a lot had to do with this, um, these particular expressions for um, yeah for the coefficients as these um, um, yeah character sums over the additive character. So what happens when you have Artinshire uh, surfaces? Do you have expression like that, that clean? Um, I think it will probably require more work to have to look at all the details, but it, it does discuss that in, in the paper. He has a bound, uh, the bound you mentioned, he has a bound for hypersurfaces also. So maybe there's a way around, okay. but I'm not saying it's, it's trivial. Whose paper are you talking about in thin? That, that paper of Rojas Leon in, in one. And that same paper of 2011, ah, the last Rojas section Leon. is the, addressing that. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, yes, but, I, yeah, but, uh, I haven't yeah. thought about this at all. So. <laughs> but okay, no really, problem. That's a, Thank you. that's a really nice, yeah, that, yeah, that sounds, yeah, yeah, very nice question, yeah. 